Hey guys, welcome to our second uh, biology podcast for the year. We're going to start off talking a little bit about chemistry, stuff that you probably already know from your previous classes. So a lot of this will be a review, but that's okay. We all like a review because that makes life a little bit easier. Um, a lot of terminology, um, so just make sure that you know all these terms and how they apply so that when you hear them later in the year, that stuff will all be familiar. So we're going to start off talking about atoms. And so first off, what's, what's up with atoms? What all do we need to know? I mean, remember, atoms are the smallest building block of the universe, okay? Um, they're not, obviously not the smallest particles, but they're the smallest things um, that are going to make up most of the matter that we're going to worry about in biology class. So in the middle here, we've got a nucleus. Remember that in the nucleus, you have two types of things. So you have protons, okay? Protons, remember, have a positive charge. And then you've got neutrons, okay? Neutrons have a negative charge. And then all of this big fuzzy area, okay, around the outside of that, all of that big fuzzy area, those, this whole, all of this stuff, this is where we're going to find electrons, Okay, and electrons have a negative charge. Now, most of what's going to matter to us in biology is that, first off, that there are atoms, that they're the smallest part of elements. Um, and then, more to the point, we're going to worry about the chemical reactions that occur as electrons uh, transfer places. We'll talk a little bit about neutrons and protons, but they're not the most important thing. So, why are atoms important? Well, atoms are important because they are the smallest parts of elements. Okay, and remember what an element is is that it's a pure substance, can't be broken down into something else by physical or chemical means. Now, again, jump back to the last slide. Obviously, we can break up atoms. We can break them up into electrons, protons, and neutrons, just like we could break up those things into um, smaller quarks beyond that. But elements themselves, the things that make up most matter, are going to uh, have their smallest unit as an atom. Okay? So... Like in the pictures here, this is copper, mercury, um, in the container would be helium here. Those are all examples of elements. Elements can come in solid, liquid, and gas phases. Um, and you'll remember all that stuff from your chemistry classes. We're not going to worry too much about all of that lingo, just that you know what elements themselves are, that they're pure substances that we can't break down further. Um, atoms of the same element can be different from each other. They can have... Um, isotopes, which means that they have different numbers of neutrons. And so, like, if we look at these two um, nuclei over here, that's a nu nuclei, plural of nucleus, um, then we can look at these and see that we've got different numbers of the neutrons. And so if we counted these up, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there are 10 nuclei in this one, and then one, or new, there are 10 neutrons in this one. And then over in this one, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 nuclei in this one. Now, this is important because this allows us then to give these two different names. So these are neon nuclei. And so that means that this is what we call a neon 20. Now, why do we call it 20? Because it's got 10 neutrons and 10 protons. All neons have to have 10 protons. But the 10 neutrons, we add those together, that gives us 20. And if we go over here to the second one, then that is a neon 22. Now, what's different about that? Well, it's different because it has more neutrons than the other neon did. Okay, why does that matter to us in biology? I mean, we understand, okay, so that's the deal for chemistry. Why does it matter in biology? Well, in biology, it matters because it can make radioactive isotopes. Okay, and this matters a lot because this is one of the ways that we can tell how old something is, say, in biology, because we can do what's called a C14 dating, or a carbon-14 dating, okay? So there's C14 and there's C12. Normal carbon is 12, radiocarbon is C14, and it decays at a very steady rate, and that's going to let us know how old something is um, biologically, say, that we dug up from thousands of years ago, okay? So that isotope stuff matters to us somewhat in biology as well. Uh, we also have compounds. So compounds are when we take two or more elements and we combine them, um, they're going to so the the elements combine in to form compounds two or more of them combine together and they form a compound now why does that matter to us well because compounds are like the next step up from elements and that's what everything gets made from and so some compounds are really common things um, that we know so something like sodium chloride salt okay or over here water is h2o okay those are compounds 
Um, but some other compounds that matter to us in biology that we'll talk about here pretty briefly um, are lipids. Okay, that's a compound. Um, DNA, those are molecules. Okay, carbohydrates like sugar and stuff that we're going to consume. Okay, um, those all, all of these things are compounds. Actually, specifically speaking, they are all molecules and molecules. So, what then holds things together to form compounds? How do we get, how do we get the elements to form together? Well, there's chemical bonds that occur, and we're not going to go too deep into the bonding. Okay, again, hopefully you've had that in chemistry class. There are two main types of bonds that we're going to worry about. So, in general, a bond is some sort of force that's going to hold the elements together. Um, the first type that we're going to be concerned with are covalent bonds. And all of those macromolecules, all those biological things that I named in the last slide, lipids, proteins, DNA, all that stuff, they are the result of covalent bonding, okay, where the electrons are actually shared between the atoms. So if you look right here, we've got two hydrogen atoms. So these are the nuclei. And then here in the middle are the electrons. And what you'll notice is that you see this area here where they're overlapped, okay? And that area where they're overlapped, that's the bond actually forming, okay? Now... Why is it important? That actually results then in a molecule for us, okay? So smallest unit of a covalently bonded compound is called a molecule. So when you hear the word molecule, you know that you've got a compound that's bonded together covalently. Now, that's not the only kind of bond for us. Um, ionic bonds also occur. And in an ionic bond, there's actually a transfer of an electron, okay? So in a covalent bond, things are shared. In an ionic bond, they don't sit there and overlap each other like they did for covalent bonds, but in ionic bonds, something gets transferred. So common case, I mean, the most common compound for us to think about ionically is salt, sodium chloride. So what happens in that case is sodium loses an electron. That electron leaves sodium, goes to chlorine. And what that does is that initially they had a balance, okay? 11 protons, 11 electrons, 17 protons, 17 electrons. After the transfer occurs, though, after sodium gives up an electron to chlorine, now sodium only has 10 electrons, chlorine has 18 electrons, and so that gives us a little bit of an imbalance. Now, why does that matter so much? Because that gives us a charge, okay? So now the sodium has a positive charge, the chloride, chlorine becomes a chloride ion, it has a negative charge, and what do things that are opposites do? Opposites attract, that's how we get an ionic bond. Um, other than just straight up bonds, there are some forces that aren't as strong as bonds that we call intermolecular forces. Um, these are actually gonna be really important to us in biology, particularly in the case of hydrogen bonding. Um, hydrogen bonding basically just means that you've got a hydrogen and that hydrogen is bonded to something that's really electronegative they get a really big difference and it almost gives them a charge, okay? It actually gives them a small charge, not as much as a whole electron difference, but enough to make a big difference. So what we see in this diagram here, these are water molecules. So the red end is the oxygens, the white end are the hydrogens, okay? Remember, of course, water is what? Water is H2O, okay? Sorry, the writing went really squirrely over there. Um, H2O. And so that means that we've got oxygen and two hydrogens. And since the oxygen end gets a little bit of a negative charge, the hydrogen end gets a little bit of a positive charge. Hydrogen or water molecules form an intermolecular force between the molecules. Okay, so you got bonding, bonding the atoms to each other, and then intermolecular forces holding the actual molecules together. And that's a real common case. Water undergoes hydrogen bonding, gives water all sorts of strange properties that are really important to us in biology.